Welcome back to Trees Could Talk, the only show that, if you didn't listen to it, did it even happen? <laughs> I'm Zach. And I'm Natalie. And today we're going to talk about careers in marine science. Uh, so this week, it was kind of a whirlwind. Uh, we found out about a, a research trip opportunity. Is that what it is? Yeah. So um, I saw a posting from Double Act Productions in one of the marine science job posting Facebook groups I'm a part of. And I literally saw it a couple of days ago and I told you about it. I was like, Zach, the deadline is this Thursday night. So we were really busy trying to get an application in for, it's a televised scientific research trip um, in the Bahamas for four to six weeks in the month of November. And it's led by um, the shark man. The shark man. The shark man. That's no name, no name, no first, no last. He's the shark. And then man and apparently he's pretty well known because when i tried uh googling him and youtubing him the only thing he didn't have his own youtube channel which is kind of strange considering we're in the age of someone like um what's that in the guy uh something peterson uh coyote coyote peterson uh what's the name of his show like something strange wild where he lets himself get bit by, by poisonous like, animals <laughs> yeah pretty much um but yeah he's like a mazda um ambassador and they did this crazy like nat geo style mazda commercial with him and like there's a bunch of interviews with him uh so maybe there was just you know something going on with him in like the early 2000s where he was on tv a lot kind of like steve Irwin-esque. he seems pretty cool i like his accent yeah i was about to say how did he say mazda we watched like two seconds in the mazda commercial like mazda <laughs> probably yeah he seems pretty cool guy uh so yeah natalie brought to my attention that uh there's this opportunity for her to basically be selected to be part of a research uh trip and it's going to be televised now we don't know what um channel it's going to be on but i know that um this production company has done stuff on nat geo recently yeah. and on discovery channel so that'd be pretty cool because the uh recording date is set for november correct mm -hmm. which means with production and editing it probably will premiere for shark week which would be pretty cool that would be so meta. All those all those summers I've been watching Shark Week when I was younger. To be on it, I mean, I don't know if it's gonna be something for Shark Week, and they didn't really say what the title of the show is gonna be. But yeah. the whole application was Shark Adventure. I think it's gonna be called Shark Adventure because it's a cool name. Basically, what they said, and obviously this might not be actually the actual premise of the show because the description was probably written by like an intern, but it basically said that uh, a group of um, marine scientists i guess uh, you call them right um are going to be selected to go on the trip and um, at the end one person is going to be selected to um go on the next trip with go on the next um non-televised research ocean, expedition ocean expedition yeah <laughs> i think expedition sounds way more professional and scientific than adventure <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's also for tv so we'll see i mean as usual, we put way too much effort into doing the application video, like most things in our life. 110% BB. 100, dude, 100, like 75. Yeah, at least. I, I've barely slept this week. I'm so tired. <laughs> and now we're doing this podcast. Yeah, well, they were saying that for the application, you can just film it with an iPhone. Just don't do it in uh, portrait, do it in landscape. And of course, we went out with, you know, multiple cameras, you know, the. Oh, you the can equipment. describe that. Yeah, so. Uh, Natalie gave me the instructions and basically it was just a list of questions um, to be answered on video. I'm assuming they're going to probably use the video for the pilot episode of the show. And um, the only advice was to speak loud and clear and to hold the phone landscape mode and not vertical, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Yeah. And obviously, as soon as Natalie told me this, I was like, uh, no, you're not using your fucking phone. <laughs> We have all this fucking um, videography equipment. We're yeah. going to fucking use it. And so I always love it when people um, use their skills for evil and they do something ridiculous. <laughs> uh, not that this is something ridiculous, but it is definitely over the top. So um, yeah, when you have a filmmaker for a husband. Yeah, an aspiring filmmaker, at least. So uh, we didn't really have to do all this over, a over the top cinematic stuff. Um, Natalie's experiences pretty much speak for themselves, um, but I figured that I could help her um, show her story and who she is visually along with her 
you know, saying it verbally, and that would hopefully set her apart from the other applicants using their iPhones. Yeah, well, that hopefully. kind of goes into um, what, you know, I wanted to talk about today when going through this process, discussing it with Zach, and just helping him realize the reality of having a career in marine science, marine biology, or yeah. any of you know, um, the biological sciences, it's so competitive. It's really difficult to break into and things like even doing things like this, where you are trying to do something to set yourself apart and break through doesn't always work. And yeah. that's, there's a lot of people that, um, have a lot of, you know, relevant experience, years of experience, different internships, you know, they got all the degrees they need and they're still struggling. I still see people who are, you know, always posting in these different Facebook groups that I'm a part of asking about internship opportunities, just trying to get something or even, which again, this is what gave me the idea to kind of talk about this on the podcast, even younger people. I mean, I'm 27 years old and for the last 20 years, I've been trying to work towards a career in marine biology and to work with, you know, marine mammals and I mean, I'm not exactly doing what I thought as a little child sitting in my, in my living room watching Shark Week. I'm not exactly doing what I thought I'd be doing by the time I'd reach this age. So it's just something that is a lifelong journey. And a lot of times when you do see people that are successful in this field, they knew what they wanted when they were young and they started working towards it, you know, high school taking AP science courses, um, when you're going to college, you know, trying to get on this, you know, scientific track, like getting a bachelor's of science degree instead of a bachelor's of arts, um, knowing that you are going to need to go to grad school. Yeah. It's, you know, unless you want to just work as maybe at an aquarium, which I also have experience working at, unless you want to work at an aquarium or, you know, um, which is a great job. I, I enjoyed it. Um, working as a dive instructor, you know, you really need to get certain education um under your belt before you get even considered by any of these types of universities or um marine science centers to hire you yeah and that's something that they didn't really tell us you know they sold our generation college really hard mm -hmm. it's basically saying you know you don't want a trade job that you want to go to college which is ridiculous and now we have a shortage of trade jobs and a surplus of people with college degrees, and now they're basically selling master's degrees, saying set your part, you know, set yourself apart from, you know, someone with a bachelor's, get a master's. So it's almost like masters are the new bachelors, and bachelors don't are basically high school degrees. Mm -hmm. Not to say that you know it's you know belittling anyone's accomplishment, but yeah, of course not. Yeah, when you get into the field, though, it's completely different. They don't tell you. Um, what the job market's like. And I don't know if it's because the professors them, the professors and the administrators themselves are so far removed from the job market itself because they've been working in the field. So I don't know what it's like. Well, that's also something um, that I experienced some professors that would even say when um, going for, you know, an, a degree in marine science undergrad. Yeah. Um, part of the requirements besides the major sciences, you know, biology, chemistry, physics, taking um, the advanced upperclassmen level classes, and then also taking organic chemistry. And I've, I had a professor who said that orgo is not necessarily necessary, yeah. <laughs> um, but they just, they had to do it. So they just want everyone else to do it. They want the next generation to do it. Just learn to learn yeah. and just prove that you can work hard, which, you know, everyone's trying to do. And then yeah. you just have an influx of people coming into a job market and part of the main reason that it's hard to get hired is because there's no funding. These are all different, you know, um, marine research centers, any wildlife biology, any conservation centers, they barely have funding to run themselves that they can't always pay people to come. So then you have lots of people competing just for a chance to have an internship and just to get that experience. And most of the time when, you know, those types of um, 
entry level experiences, they're not paid. Mm. You know, the only times I really would get paid was when I was working at the aquarium again. And that's just, I that mean, was more entertainment, right? Yeah. It almost felt more like you're working for this commercial industry that wants you to have, you know, the customers and yeah. the aquarium I worked at, um, they literally called the people that worked their cast members because they had a weird fascination with Disney where they call them cast members too. And at minimum wage, mm. I, you know, I have a master's degree and I'm getting paid minimum wage to talk about marine animals with, um, children and visitors. School trips. Yeah. Now, before we get into the aquarium, uh, backtracking to college and master's degrees, um, you said that master's degrees are basically required, right? So for my, um, academic background was law enforcement and they sold criminal justice hard and you know, everybody, when they, you know, start criminal justice, they're like, Oh, I'm going to be an FBI agent. <laughs> no one tells you that, you know, the average hiring age of an FBI agent is like early thirties and that they have degrees in economics in statistics and law accounting. accounting yeah they're experts in their field that's why the fbi hires you they don't hire run-of-the-mill people who just know criminal justice theory um and they don't tell you that and you know i got my master's in homeland security and i still feel like i'm just barely scratching the surface and i i learned more going through the various processes and you know when i gave um talks to the undergrads at the uh the rowan university rider rider God, you, went to, I, you got a master's I, at rider your brother got an undergrad at rowan yeah yeah you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> I, that's why i always confuse it and then your undergrad was Rutgers. <laughs> yeah, yeah my undergrad was Rutgers in criminal justice <laughs> criminal justice degrees are a mistake do not do them <laughs> find out something that you're good at get the degree in that and then follow your law enforcement passions we'll talk about that mm -hmm. in a separate pa uh, podcast um but yeah i tell the undergrads all the time that look find something you're good at, get the degree in that, get physically in shape and go from there. And then also obviously internships are important. Now for you, is you what was your major again? I know it's long. Environmental policy, institutions and behavior and ecology and evolution. <laughs> that sounds long. It's a separate one. <laughs> okay, so yeah. I was hanging a, mi a minor in marine science. Okay, all right. So I always assumed that that was just your major, not just, not your major and your minor and you're combining it with no comma. Well, there are commas. I know, but you say I'm it so, so fast. I'll just be like, make a tongue comma. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was weird. It it's will a, be weird. Separate kind of video. <laughs> yeah. This is an, an ASMR video. Maybe it should be. <laughs> now, would you recommend that degree? Yes, of course. And if your undergraduate degree, your uh, undergrad program doesn't offer any kind of marine biology, marine science major, then definitely just major in biology, general biology, take any type of um, specific courses that you can, you know, upper level courses that you can take that are more specific towards what you want to do. And definitely just try to do as many internships as you can while you're an undergrad and take advantage of that opportunity. Speak with different professors, you know, if they're trying to do some research and they just want people to assist them in the lab that's what i did a lot in my undergrad too and that was really good experience yeah internships are invaluable um i i guess that goes for every profession definitely um now what about okay so i guess internships and then also outside experiences now you did scuba yeah i got scuba certified when i was still in high school and that's definitely, you know, not necessary. You don't have to be scuba certified okay. to work in this field. You know, you don't always have to um, be scuba diving. Even if you're uh, collecting data, you can be snorkeling while doing it. I've gone on different uh, research trips where I didn't even, you know, get in, get in scuba mode or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I was just snorkeling the entire time and waste deep water so probably for insurance purposes right because no i mean they're only interns and if they're scuba diving there's always a hazard right so snorkeling is probably easier it's cheaper you know not having to worry about that if you have interns and you're providing um 
any kind of, you know, funding for your interns or the people that are a part of your research trip, then it's cheaper to not have to do scuba diving because yeah. you have the tanks and, you know, there's always a lot more that goes into it than just bringing your own fins and mask and snorkel and just getting in the water. Now, before we go any, for, any further, I have today's sponsor. They're not really a sponsor. It's more like supporting us. Artlist.io. If you do any kind of creative, creative projects like podcasts, YouTube videos, commercials for other people, I recommend Artlist. Uh, I switched to them from other music providers because they give you the rights to the music that you download forever. So uh, if you cancel your subscription with them, you don't lose the rights to the music. Also, you can have more than one YouTube channel, more than one Instagram, uh, and they're okay with it because it's your music. I've been, uh, I've been subscribed to other providers where you could have one YouTube channel, and if you wanted to put the video on another YouTube channel, it's a no-go. You get copyright striked, or they'll block it. Uh, if you're a live streamer, perfect. There's a lot of DCMA stuff going on right now that a lot of people don't uh, understand, and the best way to get around that is to use music that you own. So if you want to own music uh, for your projects, the link is below. Um, what we get is we get a referral fee basically. And what that does is helps. It gives us extra months. If you sign up with our code, you get extra free months and then we get extra free months. So it's kind of a win-win situation. So I recommend Artlist.io. Check it out. It's down below. And it's what we use for all of our videos for ever since we started using it. And I don't see a better recommendation than that than someone just using the product or service that they recommend. Yeah. And if you want to hear some of the music that they have, you can go to their website or you can watch some of our past videos and see how Zach used some of their sound effects, sound design and music in his videos. Including the uh, video that we just released today for Natalie's application. Yeah. Actually I have, um, so this voiceover here is not for, uh, so we recorded this voiceover because I was going to put it in the final video, but uh, as I kind of mentioned in the beginning, we only had about 48 hours to do it, which means I had to produce, shoot, edit, grade, do all the sound design for that within 48 hours, basically no sleep. And uh, one of the things we did, because we were using a, um, I guess a mid-grade shotgun mic to record the interview, um, was we recorded with these Shure mics. And the reason why is because we're not really in a recording space and I don't really have... Um, the certain elements that I would prefer to cut down on the reverb. So I recorded it Natalie just doing audio on here. Uh, but I decided we ultimately decided to just stick with the boom mic for now. But, um, if you haven't listened to the video, um, this is Natalie talking about her experiences. My name is Natalie Colossa. I'm 27 years old and I live in Princeton, New Jersey. When I was younger, I felt the pull to the ocean. Its waves beckoned me and the marine life beneath the surface fascinated me. Once I had the opportunity to get scuba certified, I jumped at the chance to finally be able to see the beauty of the ocean with my own eyes rather than through books and videos. I still remember the fear and thrill of my first open water dive. It was the beginning to the greatest adventure of my life that now extends to 100 feet beneath the surface experience of having my life at the mercy of the ocean humbles me and strengthened me in a way that made me feel even more in sync with the ocean world and drove me to give back to the ocean and the life within. I've dedicated my life to work in the field of marine science and marine conservation has become a passion of mine. I want to always work towards something greater than myself and maybe even make an impact. How I got to where I am now is a culmination of successes and failures. Failures are where I grew the most and made me appreciate the work that goes into achieving anything worth having in life. Years of scientific study, research and field experience, countless dives, working under some of the smartest scientists and professors I was lucky enough to work with just proved to me I could always learn more and the ocean and the vast life within it is worthy of the awe it instills in me. Giving up is easy. I don't want to give in to the fear of failure and walk away from everything I've worked towards. I owe it to the world to give something back and overcome that fear. The fear that I won't be able to make a difference. My ambition drives me and my passion motivates me. 
I don't want the fear of failure to deter me or let me forget why I started on this journey. From my first dive at 30 feet to years later, going so deep below the surface that I couldn't even see the sun above me, I never forgot what motivated me to work in the field of marine biology. Keep learning, keep working, and one day make a difference. I will always work towards saving this vast marine world that we're lucky to see and be a part of. Damn, girl. I could listen to your voice as a, um, uh, reading books to me. <laughs> I'm fall asleep. I, that's okay. I'll just start doing that to you. I'll just read you bedtime stories yeah. every night before bed. <laughs> uh, sometimes, uh, when I can't fall asleep, when you're sleeping, I sit, I ask Google to read me a bedtime story. She's got a nice, I nice know voice. I've heard it a couple of times. Yeah. Actually listening to that, you know how I was just saying, you don't need to get a scuba you know, certification to do any type of research and stuff. Why the fuck not get that scuba certification? It's, I mean, I loved marine biology before I started scuba diving, but actually going that deep and just immersing yourself in that world. Yeah. Nothing like it. Well, I mean, you're not saying that you shouldn't get it. You're saying that it's not necessary to get an internship, but it always helps. Yeah, it's not necessary to get an internship. And if that's something that you're afraid to do, like I was trying to convince Zach to get scuba certified so we can do more fun, um, you know, videos that are underwater and go deeper. And he doesn't want to do it. Yeah, I didn't really, I didn't learn how to swim, like actually swim until right before I went to the police academy a couple of years ago. And, uh, Doing this video was a challenge for me. I mean, I'm always learning something new, but for you, this is an aquatic based video. So I had to be underwater. So <laughs> that underwater footage and the video, I'm snorkeling and I didn't know how to fucking use a snorkel. I've never used a fucking snorkel. I think like, it's not took, a real one. It took you 10 minutes to stop being like, I, I can't breathe through my nose. Yeah. I'm breathing under, I'm breathing through my mouth, but I'm underwater. This is so weird. Yeah. Well, it wasn't just that. Like, my my brain was telling me don't inhale when I was under the water and I was like I, but I can and like I felt this pressure and it just wouldn't I just couldn't do it so beyond that like trying to um compose the shots in camera in a way that I didn't really have to do much in post was hard because I was so focused on fucking breathing <laughs> well that's something also that um when you were looking into different settings and modes to use on your cameras Again, I'm sure Zach will do a video on that because there's a lot that goes into you and you know, the way that light refracts through the water, the way yeah. things move. Um, it's not as easy getting a stable shot as floating still when you have, especially in the ocean, when you have currents well, it's not moving that hard you. To, it's not that easy to hold still. I was trying to follow you and I was floating. I was like, I was just <laughs> trying to swim in place and like keep it steady and keep yeah. it vertical and keep the horizon in the right spot. But yeah, you know, there's settings that I anticipated in theory but i have never practiced that for instance the light reflect reflecting off the water i didn't think that i would need to have the um exposure that low i that thought, was insane yeah i thought i was gonna need it a little bit higher because once we got deep it got dark down there and uh no the light was reflecting off the water and it was actually pretty bright i mean obviously we weren't snorkeling that deep we were like a good uh I don't know. We were in even 10 feet, maybe. We were. Were we 10 feet? Just yeah. about. When does it get dark? 10. I mean, I it, it depends, depends how, how bright it is out, how clear the water is. And... Yeah, it's true. Yeah. But, I mean, you're going to have to do another video for anyone who liked your underwater shots and other stuff, a little tutorial on that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um. So, we talked about what kind of internships do you recommend? I mean, oh, so you, you did those internships, you did various things, but then you ended up working at the aquarium and that kind of goes into networking, right? Yeah. So working at the aquarium was a really good experience. Um, just because it was very commercial and very the man and, um, I didn't, you know, the actual aquarium had its own separate entity for, um, marine research. And mm -hmm. that's where, you know, I made a lot of networking connections was while working there and getting to meet people. So even if, you know, it feels like a grind, even if it's something that you feel that you 
you know, deserve to be paid more for, which you do, you know, there's no reason why in finance interns can make $30 an hour and you're very educated and you're making $8 an hour, which is what it was in New Jersey. Um, but I made some great connections. Um, I, that led to me working with, um, on different research projects yeah. and it led to a lot of opportunities and I met a lot of other like-minded people and that, you know, I still try to keep in contact with, um, at least somewhat on social media. And yeah, I definitely recommend getting any kind of work that you can, because once you stop working in the field, it's very hard to get back into it, you know, and even with internships, try to take as many internships as you can. I know it's really hard and that's why there's, um, a lot of discussion on how it's a field that's very hard to get into if you don't have the economic resources to support yeah. you while you're doing so. Um, you and I have had to have discussions about, you know, me taking on projects where I wouldn't be paid and you taking on that burden, but that's just something that like this trip, like this trip, I wouldn't you're be, gonna be gone for up to six weeks. Yeah. If, and I would consider myself lucky to go on something where I wouldn't be paid for six weeks, but yeah. it's still, it really is. It's, you know, that's why this field is just so amazing and just so grueling all at the same time. Yeah. You're paid for, uh, you're paid in the experiences and yeah. the things you get to do for the world. Not to say that you shouldn't get paid. You should get paid, but it's understandable why there's only so much budget allowed for research. Yeah. And it's again, kind of going into the monologue of the video that we were um, shooting the last couple of days, it almost inspired me to, you know, try to get back into it again. Just, you know, writing what I wrote, it reminded me that, you know, I, I do love marine biology. I do love the ocean and I do want to make an impact in the world. And even if that is at the expense of my bank account, <laughs> I still want to be able to you know, work in this field and try to make an impact. Yeah. Because, you know. That's all we, any of us can do. Just try all to leave, us can do. leave the world better than we found it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's it for today. Um, we'll definitely talk about this more in future podcasts. But if you haven't listened or watched our other podcasts and videos, please do. Um, definitely watch the video uh, that we just did for Natalie. Um, it will be right here. You can click it right there. Titled Back to the Ocean. Back to the it's Ocean. Me. This is me. And until next week, yeah. we'll be back to our regular uh, vlog and podcasting. We kind of dropped everything this week to get the video done, but yeah. we'll return to normal next week. And yeah, we'll talk at you next week. Thanks for listening and letting us uh, have a conversation with you. If you have you know any other questions you want to ask me, if there's something that I didn't discuss in this video, Feel free to leave a comment below and maybe we'll be able to address this again. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And until then, if this is If Trees Could Talk and we'll see you next week. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.